वेलकम टू द स्टेथोस्कोप आई यू रेडी टू एस द क्रिटिकल थिंकिंग सेक्शन ऑफ द आई एम एर एग्जाम वेल यू आर इन लक बिकॉज इन दिस ट्यूटोरियल विल बी डिस्कसिंग अ क्रूशल स्किल नीडेड टू सक्सीड इन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन टाइप दैट समराइजिंग द मेन कंक्लूजन इन दिस ट्यूटोरियल आई एक्सप्लेन वट इज मिनट बाय अ कंक्लूजन एंड अ प्रमिस बाय प्रोवाइडिंग एन एग्जाम्पल टू इलस्ट्रेट द कॉन्सेप्ट एंड देन आई गिव यू अ स्टेप बाय स्टेप स्ट्रैटेजी टू अप्रोच दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन by the end of this tutorial you will not only understand how to identify the conclusion of an argument but also you will be able to summarize it effectively so let's dive in understanding a conclusion and premise these terms are used interchangeably but they have different meanings a conclusion is the main idea or point that the author is trying to make and the premises are the reasons or evidences given to support that point Let's look at an example. We have a statement saying all cats are mammals, all mammals have fur, therefore all cats have fur. In this example the conclusion which is the main idea is all cats have fur. And the premises which are the evidences or reasons given to support the conclusion are all cats are mammals and all mammals have fur. So we have two premises and a conclusion in the statement. Now that we have an understanding of what a conclusion and premises are, let's talk about how to approach summarizing the main conclusion questions. These questions require you to identify the main conclusion from a given passage. In order to know whether the question is of summarizing the main conclusion or not, you first need to apply the three-step method which I mentioned in my previous video. So step number 1 is to read the question first this little text and once you know that the question is asking about the conclusion you can be in conclusion mode now step number 2 is to read the argument carefully typically an argument consists of one or more premises a link between premise and a conclusion and a conclusion to succeed in the first question type you need to have a keen eye for detail It's important to read the argument carefully and ensure that you fully comprehend the author's perspective and you know what the author is trying to convey. Step number 3 is to look for the signal words such as thus, therefore, so, consequently, or as a result. These are the words that often indicate the conclusion. Step number 4 is to identify the conclusion. In any argument conclusion is the key takeaway it's the author's big idea that they are trying to convey you have to determine the main conclusion based on the premises which may be preceded by the trigger words like thus therefore or consequently by identify the conclusion you can then move on to summarizing it in your own words step number 5 is to summarize the main conclusion now comes the fun part This is where you get to flex your critical thinking muscles and show off your analytical skills. Your summary should be concise and clear, accurately representing the author's intended meanings. It's essential that you rephrase the conclusion in your own words, but be careful not to distort the original meanings. Step number 6 is to check your summary. The final step in summarizing the conclusion is to check your work. Double check that your summary is accurate, concise and clear. You should make sure that you have effectively conveyed the author's intended meaning without underlying the message of the argument. Let's apply these steps on a basic critical thinking question. So the argument is all birds have feathers. Penguins are birds, therefore penguins have feathers. So we already know that we are hunting conclusion so we'll skip step number 1 here and we'll proceed to step number 2 which is read the argument carefully All birds have feathers penguins are birds therefore penguins have feathers In this argument the author is making a claim about penguins and their characteristics They are stating that all birds have feathers and since penguins are birds they too must have feathers it's important to take note of the key premise in this argument there are two premises all birds have feathers penguins are birds so step number 3 is to look for the signal words here in this argument our signal word is therefore 
Moving towards step number four, which is identify the conclusion. The conclusion of this argument is that penguins have feathers. It's the main point that the author is trying to convey and is followed by the premise that penguins are birds. Step number five is to summarize the conclusion. To summarize the conclusion in this argument, you could rephrase it as all penguin possess feathers. This statement accurately conveys the author's intended meaning in a concise and clear way. Step number six is to check your summary. Double check that your summary is accurate and doesn't distort the original meaning. In this case, all penguin possess feathers maintains the same message as the main conclusion but in different wording. So this is the summary of today's tutorial and it was a very basic practice. In the IMN exam, you will encounter passages on a variety of topics. So it's important to be able to quickly and accurately identify the main conclusion in each one. To practice this skill, try reading articles or opinion pieces online and identifying the main conclusion. In our next video, we'll be practicing some actual IMED styled questions. Remember, being able to identify and summarize passage is a key skill for the IMED exam. With practice, you can improve your ability to do so and increase your chances of success on test day. Thanks for watching and good luck.